We had a wonderful Easter sunrise service out of the Lutheran Church this morning, and the, what I really liked the most was at the beginning, we started outside, and they started a little fire. Took them a little while to get it going. Mike Rivers all helped them, Boy Scout that he is. And uh, <laughs> we got the fire started, and then they lit the big Paschal candle, Christ candle, the Easter candle, and then they, we all had little candles like we do on Christmas Eve. And it was fairly dark out yet, and dark inside, they then turned the lights on, and we processed into the church, bringing the light in. It was very meaningful, very wonderful. And I got thinking about that and some things I read this week. Uh, what day of the week did Jesus rise on? Sunday, the first day of the week. Think back in your head to Genesis chapter 1, creation. What was the first thing that God created? On the first day, God said, let there be light. And that be that when Jesus rises from the grave, it's on the first day of the week. And he is the light of the world. And he brings light from our darkness. Isn't the meaning just so wonderful throughout the whole Bible? Everything is unified and tied together so beautifully, so wonderfully. When the, when the women, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, we're not quite sure who this other Mary is. But sometimes it says Mary, the wife of Clopas. And some think that that was like a cousin uh, or a sister to Mary, Jesus' mother. Everybody was named Mary back then. It might have even been her sister or a cousin. And so a relative of Jesus goes with Mary Magdalene. Mary, the mother of Jesus, doesn't go to the tomb. John has taken her into his home and is probably protecting her. They heard Jesus say that I'm going to rise from the dead, but they saw the reality of the cross. And they thought, how could this even be? Raising from this. They had put him into the tomb. And they came back on this Sunday, not to find a resurrected Lord, they thought, but to anoint his body if they could. They wanted to see if they could get the stone rolled away, if the guards would be nice enough to do that. Could you please roll away the stone so that we can go in and anoint his body? And maybe they would, maybe they wouldn't. So they went to the tomb to see what they could do. What a story. Behold, when they were on their way, there was a great earthquake. And an angel of the Lord descended from heaven. There was a great earthquake. You know, there was a great earthquake on Good Friday, too. Wasn't it? Tore the, the veil of the temple into the curtain of the temple. God's anger, God's crying out, an earthquake. This is an earthquake of another type. This is a, a shouting out for joy earthquake. And it shook the earth. And the stone was rolled away by the angel. <coughs> Jesus didn't have to roll the stone away. The angel came from God as a messenger and rolled the stone away, giving God's approval. And then you know what the angel did to that stone? What did he do to it? He sat on it. When I lived in Marietta, I used to like to go to Mound Cemetery. Pastors are weird. We like to go to cemeteries sometimes. And we look at the graves and we wonder about the people and, and some of the gravestones are very interesting. And there was one from a hundred years ago and I said, I've never seen one like that before. And it was an oil derrick. And then the guy who was buried in it, there was a statue of him sitting on it like this. I said, that is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. He's like, I conquered, I got the money, you know, I got the oil. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just conquered. He just sit there, his hands on his chin, you know. Somebody that sits on top of a stone or something like that means I've conquered. I've conquered it. And the angel sitting on the stone that had sat in front of the tomb said, we've conquered it. 
we've conquered death. Death no longer has dominion over us. Amen? When we believe in Jesus Christ, death has no hold over us. When we die, our bodies may die, but our spirit, we get a spiritual body, and it goes to be with God. On Good Friday, the thief beside Jesus, the penitent thief, said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, today, amen, today you'll be with me in paradise. What a promise we all have from Jesus. The angel rolled the stone away and then sat on it like, that was no big deal. The Lord has power over all this. Things aren't always what they seem. Things aren't always what they appear. We have to look at them from God's perspective, from God's point of view. It says his countenance was like lightning, his clothing was white as snow. He, this angel just glowed with the light, again, the light that comes from God. The guards shook for fear and they passed out. But the angel said to the women, don't be afraid. A phrase that occurs more than any other in all the Bible. Don't be afraid. And it's almost always followed by some kind of an affirmation, like for the Lord is with you or something like that. Here it says, don't be afraid. I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. You saw that. But he is not here. He is risen greatest words in the Bible. He is not here. You know, if the, if the angels just stopped there, Mary and the other Mary would have wondered what happened to his body. Where did Jesus go? But he says, he's not here. He is 